Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim GK, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. Today, our topic is how to create marketing material in order to solicit government business. As you know, the government is the largest buyer in the world, and it behooves you that, looking at your whole custom profile, you need to have some type of federal government business in there. They can actually be your main customer. So we're going to take a break real quick, and we'll be back in a moment with the show. We're going to talk about creating marketing materials to market to government agencies. We'll be back in one moment. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to the core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. talked about marketing, we've talked about how to find the business, we've talked about how to find the people, we've talked about the GSA schedules. Now that we've decided who we're going to market to, you know, coming up with a, a marketing list to the Navy or to the Army or to the Department of Homeland Security, now it's our marketing material. What are we going to put forth to these different agencies? Here in the next half hour, 45 minutes, hour, we're going to talk about how to conceptualize your marketing material. You started on that yesterday with your USP. You started on that with your SWOT analysis. As you can see, everything is sequential throughout the entire three days. You have started on those. If you had a chance last night to work on your USP, then you're quite a ways ahead. We're going to talk about the most effective format, how to compose compelling copy. You know, I had a, I had a client that wanted me to review his marketing material. He sent me this 12-page disjointed discussion of his company, and most everything was repeated in, the, in there three times. You know, not really compelling copy, you know, and how to present the message persuasively, how to learn how to stand up here and talk. You know, types of marketing materials, these are the different kinds that you're going to put forward, business cards, brochures, your capability statements, PowerPoint, if you use a PowerPoint presentation, if you can give a presentation or send a presentation to someone to look at. Websites are very important. Newsletters. PR releases, news releases are great because if you get a large contract, you can put it in the local newspaper. You can submit it to the local newspaper for publishing. Some of them will put it in there, and that gives you exposure. You know, other companies, you know, other prime contractors can see that, or it's just one more thing to add to your marketing material. Marketing materials are there to inform the buyer about you, inform the the potential client. It's to remind them. Like I say, you've got to touch them like seven times, and it's to persuade them to action. You want your marketing materials 
to create action. You know, obviously everything's keyed towards promoting business development. You know, that's what you want. We're all here to grow our businesses. So marketing materials, like the one client, 12 pages. I got through the first paragraph, I was bored. You know, you want your marketing materials to be concise, be accurate, and talk about who you are, what you do, and have the buyer or client do something. Build credibility. You know, why should the buyer do something with you? What is your credibility? What's your background? The elements of the marketing materials is the actual text, what it says, the graphics that go along with it, what type of media such as the web page, such as PowerPoint, such as a flyer, such as a capability statement. One thing that's happening quite a bit right now is that is replacing that. That is a very powerful media right now. That is a CD. That is a business card CD. And at the, at the expo I was at Wednesday in Sacramento, that has all of the information. Now, this is from a public utility. Okay? That has all the information from the Sacramento Municipal Utility District as far as contract opportunities, points of contact. You know, I pop this in my CD player, and I can pull it right out. I found painfully, as Dan was saying about printing all the uh, the marketing materials and copies of the GSA price list. GSA has a uh, annual expo that they put on every year. And the first year I went to that, I heard that, oh, wow, there's going to be 6,000 buyers come through, which there are. 6,000 buyers come by your booth in a day and a half. So I had... 2,500 copies of our price list done and took 2,500 flyers and brought 2,300 copies of each back with people don't want to carry a huge package like that when you do a trade show. There are 500 companies that are at the GSA Expo. 500 of those would weigh how much? So if each potential buyer picked up one of these from each booth, They'd be carrying, yeah, 100 pounds back with them. Sometimes you have to have the written document. Some people want those. But definitely look at uh, look at electronic media as market. You know, move with the time. Obviously, your marketing material wants to answer the basic question. Who, what, when, where, and how. Who are you? What do you do? When can you do it? Where are you? Where are you capable of going? You know, IT security is pretty fluid. You know, you're based in the Springs, but... If you had a great job to do in Washington, D.C., it would be very simple to go there or even work virtually. So you have the capability. And how? Obviously, the how goes back to your USP. So there again, it all ties in. How do you do what you do? How do you provide value? And that's one of the biggest things. How do you provide value? The value you provide to a potential client is going to motivate them to act. You know, I can help you with your government contracting program, Greg, and I can save you money. I can help your bottom line. You know, I can. That's how, and this is the value I provide. There are a hundred companies that do exactly what you do. Why should the client choose you over the other 99? What makes you different? What makes you unique? Find out what makes you unique and focus on that. Are you unique because you have more experience than anybody else? Are you unique because you have experience in the federal agencies or the state agencies? You specialize in county processes. You know, you are a small business. You are a woman-owned small business. What makes you unique? You just did an exact job like that. You just machined almost the exact same part two months ago, and the client said you did a great job. Why are you different than the other 99 people? Conceptualizing the method is going back to, number one, the USP, putting a message together, and number two, Determining who your audience is. Now, with the concept of, of electronic media, you know, we can do a Word document. We can then change that into a PDF. We can be very fluid in the marketing materials today. It used to be you typed something out if it wasn't right. You know, you had to have a graphic designer do it. Nowadays, with thanks to the electronic age, you can actually change your material. You can come up with a basic format for your marketing material. And then you can adjust it. I've got, uh, I've got one campaign that I work for a client that all we have to do is change where the products are good for. When we talk about the Navy, we talk about on ship, in the water. When we talk about the Army, we talk about in the desert. It's actually that, that waterproof case company. We have so much fun with the marketing on that 
because we talk about forest service, we talk about in the woods. And all we have to do is take the marketing material that we have, like in a Word document, a flyer that we've created, and make one change. But target your audience. It's very effective. And it looks like the material was created, all the entire material was created specifically for that one agency. I've had buyers come back and say, wow, that was a great flyer. You know, it, it told me a lot. But target your audience. You can do that nowadays. What purpose does it serve is do you want your marketing material to be a cheerleader for you? More rah, rah. You know, this is who I am. Put a flag behind it. Talk about your company. Do you want it to inform? Do you want it to talk about a specific IT security process? Determine how you want the material to read. And that will determine what information has to go into it. How will it be delivered? Electronically is very effective in getting material out to a lot of people. The only problem is you can't rely specifically on an email campaign. There has to be personal contact, especially with the federal government. As I talked about Bill Bickelman, there has to be personal contact because a lot of these people have 500 unread emails in their box. But when you call them and talk to them, you know, Jim, did you get a chance to review my information? No, but uh, while I got you on the phone, let me pull it up right now. I've had him do that. And that's great because then we can talk about it right at the point. You know, but what medium? A mailing campaign. Mailing campaigns are, are effective in that somebody has a hard copy of something to look at in their hands. The problem being is with pre-sorted mail nowadays, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes out. There's a lot of mailing campaigns that go forward. And there's a lot of junk mail or people perceive as junk mail. Yeah, marketing materials, pen, point of sale material for some people is very effective. Fluid targeted flyers are very effective. One of them that I like, I used to have large copy such as that for my marketing material. But when I'm out doing a uh, doing a trade show, doing an expo, doing you know doing a marketing event, I've got my jacket on. What's really easy is to pull the trifold right out of my pocket and I'll say hi. This is me. This is who I am. This is my information. It's got company information on the outside. It's got capabilities and success, a bulleted list right there. It's got a tagline on the back. How can we help you succeed in your government contracting goals? Very powerful words, succeed. And then it's got my mission statement. You know, very, very concise, but still a lot of white space. They can read it quickly. I don't want pages and pages of text that the client has to read. If you are going to have text, I mean, how does that top line grab you in? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing, the value. This client saved HP $100,000. That's the same thing. Giovanna's very concise, color, graphic, you know, very aesthetically pleasing. I'm sure for those people that want an example, she'd give you another one. But right there, it talks about value, you know. Saved one hundred thousand dollars. That's a powerful statement. Okay, I'm interested. How can I turn that into mine? Because a lot of people take marketing material. They try to put too much information into it. They try websites or capability statements. They try to just put everything under the sun in there. The more you put in it, the less efficient it is. A big question on preparing your materials: What's your budget? Now, if you've got a copy of Photoshop or you know Paint Shop Pro, I mean even Word or PowerPoint, you can create something very nice right on your desktop. If you have to custom develop something, are you going to have a graphic shop do the layout? It depends on what your budget is. I mean, some people have very nice color brochures with inserts. The CDs, for example, it does cost to have those developed. There's a company that's been at almost every trade show that I've been at that create flash business cards on the CD. And they create an actual little program that goes on the CD that talks all about your company. And it's really cool to watch. There is a cost involved. So balance everything with a budget. How much money do you have to put forward? What's your preparation time frame? There have been times when, in fact, when I uh, when I got the call from, from the one client this, earlier this week, she called me on Friday to do an expo on Wednesday. And we had to come up with some with some material. So I had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and actually three of those days I was on the road. Yeah. And we were able to put it together and get it out there. What resources do you have? I mean, how many in here are the only person in the company on this, this entire table right here? You know, you are 
the president, the vice president, the chairman of the board, the graphics designer, the coffee maker, the coffee maker, and the janitor, and the gopher. So you have to balance that. You know, can you dedicate a person to creating part of your marketing materials? And if you dedicate that person to creating those, who's going to do their job? So it's, it's for a small business, it's a balancing act. Obviously, we, we talked a lot about the format and the, you know, the medium that you're going to put forward. What's going to be effective? A simple PDF that's attached to an email, a color brochure that you have to mail out. If you're going to be doing a lot of stuff in person, what do you hand out? A large folder, a 12-page disjointed capability statement, a CD, a simple flyer. When you're putting everything together, look at what material you already have. Now, you already have a step forward. You already have your USP. We already started on that yesterday. So you have a very powerful statement to start out with. That should be the key to basically every piece of marketing material you have because the USP talks about who you are. And if you can get it down to a couple statements, so much the better. Doing your research, if you need to get additional information on your processes or if you have old information. The next to the last bullet is very important, active voice. We perform these services. We do this. We make great parts. You know, we perform superior services, the security services. Not we will. As much as possible, use the active voice. It comes a lot across a lot stronger. And as you're editing the final copy, as I said, make sure you do your USP. Another thing you'll find on every federal website is their mission statement. Now, as you're developing material, if you can include your USP, and include the information for the agency's mission into a piece of marketing material, it will be very targeted to that to that agency. So if you're looking at doing an agency marketing campaign, the first thing to do is go on their website and download their mission statement and try to include either that mission statement or a part of it into your marketing material. A key point in creating marketing materials is that it's much more powerful to say I have been in business since 1997 rather than I've been in business nine years. Very, it flows quite a bit better. Use dates, not years. Always talk about the awards, recognitions, designations, certifications, any other specific uniqueness to your company. Include letters of reference. In your material, mention that you are a small business, you are a veteran-owned, small business, disabled, if you have certificates. And a thing about including letters of reference, it's kind of an obvious, but I've seen it so many times. When you get a letter of reference, keep the original by itself and make copies of the original. Please don't make a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. I have seen people give marketing materials. They are so proud, and the letter of reference is so speckled it's turned sideways. It's got black lines on the side because it's been run through the copy machine about six times. So what I always used to do, and, and it's an interesting fact that a yellow highlighter will not copy. If you write on something with a yellow highlighter, it will not show up on the copy. I keep my letters of reference in plastic sleeve and across the front in yellow highlighter, I have written master. And that's always the master copy. Of course, nowadays, I also scan them into digital format, into PDF, and I have them and I include them in my material. In fact, in my capability statement, I always include a copy of my letters when I send them out. Because you can say anything you want about yourself, but when your clients talk about you, that's powerful. And that's why when I talked yesterday about when you get contracts over delivered, make sure you do a good job. because. Past performance is a specific indication of future business. You know, that was a client that just came through and said, I rock. And I really appreciate him sending that to me. But now that becomes part of my marketing material. I actually had one client that said, you know, I appreciate your writing skills because I wrote the technical. In fact, I put their GSA schedule package together, you know, all seven binders. Because my GSA schedules are three binders apiece, the solicitation documents, the pricing, and the technical. And I put the whole thing together. I wrote the technical. I wrote the past performance for them based on the information they gave me. Because as is usually the case with the GSA schedule, they looked at it. 
they looked at the you know the the 200 and 300 pages and kind of shook their head and said here but after i wrote it for them they know my writing skills and i asked them for a letter of reference they said write it send it to me all i actually wrote my own letter of recommendation you have but it, you know i had a relationship with that client and they trusted me to the point where i could write my own What's unique about you goes back to there's 100 businesses that do what you do. Why are you different? Always prioritize on what makes you unique. Define terminology. Hmm. Has, has there been a uh, an influx of acronyms so far over the past two days? And we have tried very hard, you know, because this is the language, you know, that Dan and I speak. And it's kind of exciting now that you guys know exactly what I mean when I say, give me your T-pin to get into your CCR so I can get your M-pin to get your ORCA. And you guys now know that. But if you, especially if you are highly technical, if you are specifying part dimensions, part processes, part of your tooling processes, how you, if you have a very technical document, explain that or try to talk in a language where people can understand. You know, IT is, is probably one of the hardest fields to do that. You know, IT security, I'm going to get your bugs out. You know, here's a, $125,000 proposal, I'm going to get your bugs out. Now, IT is very hard to write so that it, it's understandable. But be very careful about jargon or industry-specific language. Keep it simple, you know, the old KISS routine. As simple as possible, as complex as necessary to get the message across. And move from your major premise is the predominant thing about you, your USP, your minor premise is a discussion about your USP to reinforce it. And what's the conclusion? What do we want the marketing material to do? Get you a job. Move the client to action. If we give, if if I give Jim a piece of material, I mean, I, I don't want him to use it as fire starter. I want him to take that piece of marketing material and be moved to action for me. How many people have seen marketing material with pictures, splattered all over, graphics in the background, hot neon colors. Be very careful about that. If you're going to use colors, use neutral tones. You can see on all of our material, we've got our graphic in the background. Very bare, you know, you can just barely see it. Blues and, what would you say, that's a mustard? Yeah, the blues and the mustard are very neutral. Our logo is very small in the corner. You know, it's very aesthetic. We didn't splash everything up there. If you're going to use graphics, be very careful. I'm sure that's a challenge, having a good enough picture of a building or something you've designed without it taking over the entire marketing piece. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Be very careful with color. The other thing is typeface. Stick with the basics, veranda, Tahoma. Aerial, you know, don't use these really weird typefaces in your uh, in your marketing stuff. It may look pretty, but keep it simple. Go back to the keep it simple. And probably one of the key points in copy material is how effective is something when you get when you get something in the mail and it's misspelled. Before I got into this field, like I said I was in personnel, and I would get resumes all the time. These resumes, man, these people did everything. They were the greatest thing since peanut butter. You know, they had all these great jobs and right glaring in the middle of the entire resume was a big misspelled word or a, a sentence that was improperly punctuated. Make sure that your material is proofread once, twice, three times, four times. Give it to another person. One of the tricks to proofreading is to read the document backwards. Start at the end and go backwards. So if I were to take my flyer, I go to the end, workbook, skills, people, the, and, handbook, skills, people, the, of, author, co. Because, and I, I was looking for it, I, I was I was hoping I still had it. Somebody had sent me a paragraph at one time. The entire paragraph had no vowels whatsoever. No vowels in this entire paragraph. And I sat there and I read the whole thing like it was all spelled properly. Your brain is so processed, especially at this age, you know, at adulthood, your brain is so processed 
to read paragraphs. Half the time you don't read the majority of the words. You look at content. So if you're proofreading, read it backwards. Have somebody else read it. Put it down and pick it back up. Don't rely on spell check. Spell check will not pick up syntax. These are just some of the dangerous spots. I'm not going to read all of them, but as you're developing your material, watch out for bulleted lists, beginning of paragraph numbered list, because your mind will go right over top of those. Broken sentences, anything boilerplate, if you pick up something from another piece of material in your company, if you use older text, just be careful of using that. How many in here use PowerPoint? Okay, a couple of you. PowerPoint's very effective in a lot of ways. If you're presenting to a larger group, you can also use PowerPoint to send as an attachment. As long as it's not, please don't send a 25 to 30 megabyte file to someone. Just doesn't make their day. But PowerPoint's very effective in making a large presentation. Don't use it in the opening and the closing. Grab the audience in first. Talk about your material. Make sure everybody can see the slides. You know, don't stand right in front of it all the time or don't stand in front of the uh, projector. I am stage right. I am to the right of the of the screen. I've done well for you. The screen is to my left. I am to its right oh, okay. because as you read across and come back, your eyes come back in my direction. So if at all possible, stay stage right because you're going to read the line Face the audience, not the screen. You're going to come back, and here I am. I am the presenter. Use PowerPoint slides as a tool. Don't stand there with your back to the audience and say, face the audience, not the screen. Stand stage right. Don't read verbatim. And, uh, you know, what What use is a speaker if all you're going to do is regurgitate the slide? At times for emphasis, yeah, read what's up there. But Please, if you're giving a PowerPoint presentation, don't stand there and regurgitate the slide. A slide should stay up on the screen anywhere from 10 seconds to a maximum of two minutes. And as you're giving a presentation, use that as kind of a, a template. Two minutes per slide, 30 slides per hour. Does do use if you have a long technical presentation. Of course, one of the thoughts that I have is if you have very technical information, PowerPoint is to summarize. If you have a very specific technical process, give that to somebody as a handout. You know, if you were to going to talk about all of your tooling processes, all of the products that you provide, all the specifications, all the drawings that would create interest in you, I would put some very brief bullet points up on the screen and give them technical information in a document for them to review rather than trying to get a complete blueprint or a complete, you know, process up on the screen. It's easier to have it right in front of you. Don't use for motivating or for high-end talks. You know, if you're going to be motivating people, have the focus on you, you know, not on the screen. Last one's pretty important, and it goes back to the other one. Presenting in person, bring your own equipment. I have had that happen so many times to get somewhere. Plug my laptop into somebody else's a projector, and it croaks. And so here I am. I am the expert. I'm standing up here and I'm fiddling around with the laptop and the projector and punching buttons and it totally wipes it all out there. What's an advantage now, like when I went down to Tucson last month to do the Marshall Space Flight Council presentation for MBDA, I simply took down a memory stick. I had checked with the people before. They said, we've got a PowerPoint. We have a laptop that's up and running. And so all you need to do is bring us your presentation. So all I did is I took my presentation on the stick. You know, but still, if it's, if it's not my equipment, I'm still nervous about it. There again, as we talked about with the document and the other marketing material you have, be very careful in the use of color, use of font, use of graphics, use of spacing. Make sure you've got a lot of white space. Your PowerPoint slide should summarize what you're talking about. The printed presentation folder, or as we gave you, the bound training book that go along with it, notes to help the people like Giovanna was saying. Fine quality paper and well-written. There again, you're making an impression about yourself and your marketing material. How many people have got a fax from one of these fax sales companies 
and it takes up half the toner cartridge in one piece of paper, yeah, it's all black. If you're going to have factable materials and you're using graphics, make sure you use a lower resolution picture or just take the graphic out of there altogether if possible. If you're going to do a fact, do it as simple as possible. Yeah, don't use large areas of black. And if you do have pictures in there, set the uh, fax machine if you have the capabilities to have them. Make it nicer on the other end for the other person. Business cards. I actually looked at the Dolores's from yesterday, and very nice business card. Depends on what you want on it. Obviously, your company name. I have seen cards with pictures on there. If you're going to have a business card with a picture of the person, please have a quality picture. I had one lady give me a business card with her picture on. The picture was so grainy, she looked like a chipmunk. And she says, oh, I'm sorry, I was having a bad picture day. I was, I was politically correct. I said, oh, that's fine, no, no problem. But it was, it was very, very poor quality. And picture business cards are very stylish. They look really good if they're done. Right. You know, don't try to put too much information on there, but also don't try to, uh, you know, make it so bare that there's nothing. If you have a GSA schedule, you are allowed to use the GSA logo on all of your marketing materials. You can put it on your business card. You can put it on your letterhead. You can put it on your website. If you have certifications, woman-owned, hub-zone, make sure you have those. In fact, what I did is I went through my card scan, and I pulled some of the business cards I thought were kind of interesting. That is a busy card. I mean, they're telling about everything that they do. The name is Fur Exchange, yet they do a lot of other gifts. Personally, I think that's a little bit too busy. That's nice. Very simple. Again, a vertical format. It's got a tagline or a USP on there. It's got all of his information. I like the word direct line. That shows people they can get direct to you. Now, see, one of the things I do is I do not put my 800 number on my business card. But if I go up to someone, I say, look, let me give you my direct 800 number. Boy, do they feel important because I just gave them my direct 800 number. And they think, wow, I'm special. But I've actually had, and I this comes direct from the contracting officers in the federal government. Please put your certifications on your business cards. Woman-owned, small business, hub zone, 8A. In fact, I've got a card in here, right here. Bay Systems Consulting, woman-owned, 8A, SDB, hub zone. She had them covered. And she puts them up there. That's a nice one. It has a it has a good tagline on it. Bringing innovative ideas to the web, one niche at a time. She's very heavy into web sales, so her e- her email is one of the key points on there. Not a whole lot of information. That's got a lot of information, but it's got a nice layout to it. It's it's on the edge. I was impressed with this card. This lady does access for developmentally disabled and visually impaired people. The dots are Braille. Her card was done in Braille also. Very impressive. Went to a trade show and and this one sergeant handed me his business card that was on regular paper and skewed to the side like that. Those are ones he made himself, Greg. (laughs) Yeah. No, the government won't buy them. So he had to do them himself. But, you know, they were skewed and they were on regular paper. That was a nice one. And also, the reason I pulled this card up here is it depends out. Jerome is a very easy person to talk to. NREL, National Renewable Energy Laboratory. He is a good point of contact for a lot of different services. They are a full-service laboratory of the Department of Energy. They have requirements for IT security, I'm sure, janitorial. They might for machining for all of the processes they have out there. Not too sure they got a hospital out there, unfortunately, Mary Sue. You know, the government needs a lot of copy. There again, GSA, he chose not to use the logo. He just said GSA schedule, SDB 8A, SDB, veteran owned. A lot of information, but a nice layout. And he's got all the information on there, his phone, his cell, his fax, email, website. You know, I I gotta give it to Howard. Because he is a very wealthy man. But this is only one half of his business card. It's printed the same way on the other side. It's also on cheap paper. This guy owns, I don't know how many different companies here and in China. He's a multimillionaire. And he's got a a terrible looking business card. Don't know why. So we covered business cards. 
The last thing in the marketing piece that we have is creating the capability statement. It's a one to two page overview of the company. And I would even say if you could get it less than that, make it one page. I'll put your information on that. If you can get your USP down to one to two sentences, just expand on your USP. Come up with a capability statement. Because obviously, there is, a lot of, there is a lot of material that we have to read today. There is a lot of material that your clients and potential clients have to read. And if you don't grab them in the first paragraph, you know, the rest of it is for not. So make sure your capability statement is, is concise and short. You know, definitely not 12 pages like the one I was given to read. PDF is, very, is a very powerful medium nowadays. You can create a PDF from Excel sheets and, you know, Word and, you know, PowerPoint. So you can make a, you can even make a colorful capability statement. But always, of course, make sure that it's short. How will you solve the challenges or needs of the agency you're going after? Yeah. What value do you bring? If you know their mission statement, you can also look at what direction they're going in. How can you solve a need? Do research. Learn their website. Learn a uh, learn an agency's website. You know, spend the time going through there, and you can target your material right to that specific need of the agency with the fluidity of you know Word and PowerPoint. You can create different capability statements based on the agency. It's not that hard because you have a core, kind of like I did for the uh, the waterproof cases. I made a different piece of material for each federal agency. Always show your best quality. As you put everything forward, show your best qualities, use your best pictures, reference your best clients, talk about your best project. When you go to get your GSA, the clients you use, use your best, obviously. Why would you want to use material that was mediocre? That shows you as mediocre. But some people just slap stuff together. Put thought into what your marketing material says. So we've talked about marketing materials, the format, the copy, how to present it. We've looked at business slides, capability statements. I know I've looked at some of yours. You guys have done some good jobs on your stuff. Well, thank you for listening to this series. We have five more in the series. We're going to continue on is, is thinking of how to finance your business through this process. Also, we're going to talk about the next couple of shows is how to solicit an issue and, and also how to prepare a RFP and uh, I think one also an IFB ex- ex- exercise. So you guys are listening to so you can know what the acronym is meant. So anyway, we continue with the series for the next four more days. One will be tomorrow and the latter four will probably be next week. So we continue this again at 7 o'clock. Central Time for the rest of next week, and that would be three weeks of episodes you can listen to, which is an hour. I know they're pretty long, but it's a lot of wealth of information that can use you can use to do business with the government and to grow your business. Thank you for listening, all. Tim J.K., The Core Business Show. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim J.K. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.